Hvala svima što ste se odazvali pozivu na konferenciju za medije koje pokretno dajemo Beograd organizuje sa našim prijateljima. Danas nam je u gostima, u stvari ne danas, nego i ovih dana, Tomas Vajc. On je kopredsednik Evropske zelene partije. Nadamo se da mu prevod radi. Da bi čuo šta mi pričam, on će vam se posle obratiti na engleskom, a vi ćete imati simultani prevod. Povod za ovu posetu je je naša saradnja koja traje već jedno izvesno vreme sa progresivnim i zelenim pokretima i strankama u regionu i na evropskom nivou. Mi smo iskoristili ovu priliku da Tomasa zajedno sa različitim organizacijama civilnog društva i drugim političkim akterima upoznamo sa stanjem demokratije u Srbiji i sa stanjem ekologije i ekonomije i da sa njim napravimo nekoliko događaja da bi pokazali trend i našu afilijaciju kao pokreta zelenim progresivnim snagama, da bi pokazali da u Evropi postoji jedan talas i trend solidarnosti između različitih progresivnih zeleno-levih političkih aktera i da ne dajemo Beograd pripada toj porodici. Ono što je za nas važno je da danas poručimo da mi kao pokret Ne dajemo Beograd, stojimo čvrsto na pravcu održivog razvoja, stojimo na pravcu socijalne pravde, stojimo na pravcu transparentnosti i javnosti rada državnih organa, stojimo na pravcu poštovanja ljudskih prava i da se zalažemo da u Srbiji jedna nova zelano-leva politika za 21. vek dobije svoje jače uporište kako u lokalnim, tako i u nacionalnim parlamentima i to ćemo raditi na tom u budućnosti kao što radimo u svih ovih godina. Takođe želimo da poručimo da ne podrška zelenih zelene stranke i zelenih organizacija jako važna i u ovom procesu među stranačkog dijaloga koji traje pod upokraviteljstvom Europske unije. Ja ne bih danas mnogo dužio, pustit ću prvo Tomasa da nam kaže par uvodnih reči, a onda je malo predvijek iz fondacije Heinrich Bell, kao naše političke partnere, da isto kaže nešto o važnosti ove, da kažemo, međunarodne sradnje. Tomas, for is yours. Thank you, Dobica. Hello, everybody, and thank you very much for joining this press conference. Uh, we are visiting Serbia for three days now, uh, meeting uh, political actors and civil society actors that work on a green transition of Serbia uh, and on a green transition that also includes social justice and modern good governance, that includes transparency, that includes uh, functioning institutions. And, uh, first day I was spending uh, primarily with uh, civil society initiatives and uh, I was uh, walked around Belgrade uh, finding out that uh, the wastewater or big amounts of wastewater in Belgrade are still going directly into the river. Uh, I've seen uh, the marina uh, a bit upstream uh, that is, I would say, I would call it a cloak. Um, there is a heavy impact of manure and of, of, of wastewater directly into the Danube. Uh, I've seen uh, waste deposits, wild waste deposits across the country, uh, many of them illegal or at least without a legal status. Uh, I have seen uh, uh, massive contamination of plastic uh, along the Danube uh, and a lot of other environmental uh, um, devastations. Uh, and uh, I must say, uh, what brought me here again, and it's not my first time in Serbia by far not, I'm coming since many years to support mainly civil society organizations, but what brought me uh, to Serbia again uh, uh, and made me shorten my holidays is that I realized that there is something changing in that country, that more and more citizens are ready to stand up for good quality of life, they are ready to stand up for their civil rights and also participation when it comes to the um, uh, allowances for big mining projects, the permissions for big infrastructure projects, where I see that uh, citizens, local communities 
are not informed, they are not included into the discussion, their interests as stakeholder are not taken into account when it comes to big mining projects, but also small hydropower projects. Uh, there is a lack of transparency, uh, there's a lot of, let's say, uh, hidden contracts in the shade, uh, which is, uh, well, causing big irritations, big worries of citizens on what is coming, uh, and uh, I'm supporting these civil society initiatives in their fight for a modern state, for good governance, and for their good livelihood. Also in terms of air pollution, which is one of the main problems, not only here in Serbia, but in several Balkan states. Um, the air pollution is causing thousands and thousands of premature death. It is affecting our children, your children, in a daily life, causing enormous amounts of asthma cases. Uh, and it's a, it's a problem which is meanwhile um, reaching citizens. And I'm quite impressed how many civil society initiatives are standing up for their rights. And, and this is also a new development, well, we, we are supporting the Vino Verica since many, many years when you were a civil society organization. Uh, uh, and meanwhile, you're a political actor, you've grown to a political actor with massive support uh, in the Belgrade population and in the overall Serbian population. And I think this is a very positive development, uh, shows that uh, citizens are also standing up for democracy, for plurality, uh, for parties or political actors that are representing solely the interests of citizens and not any other either economical or party partial interests in the country. And I think this is a very promising development for you and for Serbia uh, that this is happening here. Um, also, one of the reasons why I came is because we have started an application process for the NWO Beograd to become a formal member of the European Green family, of the European Green Party. Uh, while I must say our support is not conditioned to that because our support is belonging and oriented to all actors, whether it's civil society or political actors that stand up for good governance, for transparency, for social justice, and for an environmental transformation that grants our citizens a good quality of life. And this is a struggle that we're having all over Europe, all over the European Union. Not everything is perfect by far within the European Union, but I must say in many fields, the developments uh, have gone much further in EU states. Uh, and I very much welcome that this is now also uh, getting political pressure and getting a lot of support in your population uh, to, um, well, to manage the transition to social just and economically and environmentally functioning state. Uh, thank you very much for your interest and I'm very open to your questions. Upravo na ovo, uh, u ovom, na ovom mjestu jeste i glavna uloga fondacije Heinrich Bell, koja je samo jedna kratka uh, napomena, politička fondacija koja je bliska opciji uh, zelenih u Savjeznoj Republici Nemačkoj i koja, zahvaljujući uh, osvojenem broju glasova u Savjeznom parlamentu, od uh, vlade Republike uh, Nemačke, dakle dobija neka sredstva koja nam stoje na raspolaganju da podržavamo lokalne političke aktere i organizacije civilnog društva koje se zalažu za sve ove vrednosti koje je Tomas pominjao, a koje je pre toga Dobrica pominjao. Jedna od naših uloga jeste upravo ta, da dakle, posredujemo između lokalnih, kad kažem lokalnih, onda tu pre svega mislim na aktere u Srbiji, ali isto tako mi radimo i sa akterima u Crnoj Gori i na Kosovu, dakle da u stvari posredujemo i pomožemo u stvari njihovo delovanje i rad na lokalnim nivoima, ali isto tako da jačamo i njihove veze i komunikacije sa prijateljima, istomišljenicima političkim iz regiona pa iz cele Evrope, dakle sa akcentom na, na, na ovaj Evropsku uniju, gde su u stvari zeleni pokreti, da kažemo, za sada najveći. Neke od promjena i mi vidimo, dakle u nekom vremenu od pre 15 godina, 
kada su pojedine teme tek počinjale da bivaju važne, a pre svega pričamo o zaštiti životne sredine ili o državnom razvoju, možemo da kažemo da u tom nekom periodu ne samo da su teme dobile na važnosti, nego su stvari i pojedine organizacije nastajale, bivale snažnije, glasnije i definitivno se nalazimo u trenutku ne samo u našoj zemlji, nego ja bih rekla i u širem regionu i na cijeloj planeti, kad evidentno u stvari da više ne možemo da negiramo ni klimatske promene, odnosno krizi klimatsko, niti migracije, niti ekonomski razvoj, niti siromaštvo, niti energetsko siromaštvo. I da kažem, ako smo vredno unazad godinama radili u fondaciji zajedno sa partnerima i organizacijama civilnog društva, dakle nekako sada došlo je naše vreme, dakle došao je taj zeleni trenutak koji će definitivno trajati i fondacija je spremna da podržava sve napredne zelene glasove u zemlji. Među njima za sada najdirektnije sarađujemo i podržavamo političkog aktera Ne davimo Beograd. Međutim, mimo njih podržavamo i niz organizacija civilnog društva koje su, da kažemo, bliske onome što zagovara inicijativa Ne davimo Beograd i koji u stvari svojim naporima pokušavaju da se bave temama od održivog i pristupačnog stanovanja, do čistijeg vazduha, do energetske transformacije, dakle kako u stvari diversifikovati energetsku sliku Srbije, kako stanovanje omogućiti pristupačnijim, kako zaštititi javna dobra, kako javne servise učiniti dostupnim svima, kako urbanu mobilnost pojačati, kako u stvari napraviti i smanjiti razlike između gradova i sela, dakle ruralni razvoj ili seoski razvoj je jedna od važnih tema, I kroz sve ove teme, fondacija Heinrich Belli, ja bih rekla, to je verovatno jedna od malih narcističkih razlika naše fondacije, odnosno na sve druge političke fondacije, jeste rodna ravnopravnost. Dakle, mi se zalažemo za jednakost između muškaraca i žena, za jednak pristup resursima, za jednak pristup servisima i naravno, u stvari, za podjednog učešća u političkom životu. Eto, toliko u ovom trenutku. Šta ćemo da nas? Hvala Paola, hvala Tomase. Sad možemo krug pitanja ako možda neko ima. Hvala Tomase. 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 About what to do, how to push government to do more in protecting the environment, because we saw in I think the last 20 years that we didn't do any much big steps in protecting the environment here in Serbia or in the rest of the Balkans. And the second question would be: uh, <clears throat> I don't know if you know about the project of Rio Tinto in Loznica. Did you hear about that? Uh, what would you be your suggestion to do? And because you heard uh, that maybe there will be some kind of a referendum in Serbia regarding that uh, uh, excavation of lithium, uh, and if you would have a chance to vote on that referendum, would you vote yes or no for that? Uh -huh. Thank you for that question. Uh, first of all, my recommendation to civil society uh, is and was that uh, if they want to raise their impact, then it, I would recommend them to strengthen their cooperation. As I see, there is many, many local initiatives in many di on many different cases and many different environmental devastations. Uh, what is maybe still lacking is uh, a good coordination and, and a good uh, organization of and making it a common battle. Because what I realize in, he, in listening to all the different examples uh, from different parts of the country is that it always comes down to one basic question. Are the institutions of that country functioning? For some of uh, the cases, like uh, I would say waste deposit as an example, there is clear laws which are clearly stating what is legal and what is not legal. But the, the point is that I've heard citizens complaining that they have written complaints, that they have talked to officials, that they have even had visits of officials, 
but there was no follow-up from the juridical system, there was no action from the institution to counter illegal environmental devastations. Secondly, uh, I, would, I would say the biggest uh, advantage of all these civil society organizations and political actors is that they talk about these topics, that they were able that, to raise the public awareness across the population on these environmental problems and to clearly show that there are other ways and other solutions to deal with these problems. And this public uh, awareness and public opinion is leading to also more consciousness or at least more rhetorical reflection on environmental topics in other political parties. And I think this is a big advantage because, I mean, it's citizens at the end of the day who decide on political majorities and it's citizens that have a democratic vote that can change things in the country. So I think this is the biggest advantage uh, of civil society movements and political actors like the Mio Beograd. And I think they have done a brilliant job on that uh, in, the, in the last years. On the Rio Tinto, I haven't studied the project in detail, but I, I, what I can figure out of the reports that I got and uh, talking to local population and local initiatives, there is a comparable problem. There is a project where there's a lot of rumors about that, but there is no clear transparency on what is going on. I would say a, a new standard, a European standard, I think a standard that we should all follow, no matter if you're a member of the European Union or not, is that all contracts need to be disclosed. It needs to be clear what project is actually planned. The size needs to be clear. The landscape needs to be clear. There has to be an involvement of the local population in decision-making processes, how to shape such a project. And this is beyond the question whether I think it's useful to open another lithium mine or not. Uh, yes, we will need big amounts of lithium to change our transportation system from combustion engines to electrified engines. And I think uh, getting out of fossil fuels is neither an, 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 an uh, ideological question nor is it the question of political positioning. It's just facts that tell us that we have to reduce our CO2 emissions if we want to sustain our livelihoods in a comparable way as we do today. The, there may be di different opinions on how to actually uh, reduce CO2 emissions, how fast, there may be different opinions on how useful electrifying uh, uh, transport is and it has its downsides as well. But the demand on lithium, if you ask me, should be first served by recycling. There's only 3 to 5% of lithium globally recycled. So we're extracting it by mining, we're producing, we're selling, we're consuming, and then we're wasting all these materials onto big waste dumps. And I think first we should start to recycle, to reuse, uh, and, and, to, and to use the resources that we have extracted already before starting new big extraction projects. But even if a mining project uh, is started, it needs a proper environmental impact assessment and it needs to find compromises with the local population that is mostly impacted and we need to make sure that mining companies which prefer to come to countries with low environmental laws and with a low enforcement of environmental laws like Serbia is considered one of these countries they like to come to these countries because they, are, they can produce with low environmental standards and I mean, producing or mining with high environmental standards is more costly than if you just destroy nature uh, on any means. Uh, and, and we should be aware that, uh, well, it's not just an economical interest, uh, but it's also uh, using the weak standards and weak enforcement of your country. And I think this is something population should stand up against. So I would say the way the project is shaped in the moment, I would consider it a scandal. I would consider it going directly against 
the interests and needs of local population. Uh, and I think in that form, uh, I would sign up to a petition to stop that project in the current form. Are you ready to uh, raise that question in your opinion? Uh, uh, <coughs> I'm ready to raise the question in the e EP about the Rio Tinto and... Definitely, yes, I will. Dakle, prvo, upoznati se sa političkom situacijom u Srbiji, dati isti dialog. Moje pitanje za vas jeste da li ekološki pokret i zeleni u Srbiji imaju snagu i potencijal da postane ozbiljna politička organizacija u ovoj zemlji? Gde tu mogu da očekati podršku sa vaše strane? To je prvo pitanje. Drugo pitanje se odnosi... Mi smo došli do saznanja da vi predlažete i nismo vrstu ujedinjenja unifikacije zelenih u Srbiji. Ko bi još te žio u toj opciji, u tom savjezu, tako da kažem, na predstavićem izborima, ukoliko predlažete, naravno, da ove opcije izađu na izbor. I treće pitanje, onako malo, rekao bih, kritičnije, ali prosto jednostavno, zašto Zapad i dalje dopušta autokratsku vlast Alessandra Vučića u Srbiji. Dakle, upoznajte se, razgovarali smo sada i o Rio Tintu, imate sve informacije i dalje je prisutna podrška Zapada i Europske unije ka predsjedniku Alessandra Vučića. Dakle, kratko jednostavno, zašto još uvek ima podrška? Hvala vam. Well, maybe I start with your last question. EU is a very diverse animal, and I am clearly not supporting uh, President Vucic, but I'm here to um, support parties that have a different stance and that stand for different values than Mr. Vucic does. And this is also part of democracy. Uh, and I'm clearly supporting, as co-chair of the European Green Party, two groups, assemblies, coalitions, uh, uh, or, or um, I would say, bodies, uh, political bodies, um, here in Serbia for the upcoming elections. And this is clearly Nedavim Obeyadov, and it is the new formation around Nebošja Zelenovic. And I, I believe that both of them have the potential uh, to have a political impact. I see that they already have a political impact because they are able to communicate on green topics uh, and on green transition, but not only that, also very much on the combination of uh, an environmental topics and social justice topics. And they are very much linked, because if we talk about air pollution, who are the most affected people? It is mostly the ones with lesser incomes having their flats at heavy traffic roads, as an example. Or who are the ones at the end uh, affected by um, let's say low quality food and health affected. It's again a question also of poverty. Who are the ones that have to decide whether they can heat their house or maybe uh, buy food? It's very low elderly people's pension, pensioners that have to take these decisions. So by solving uh, energy poverty, we're solving climate, uh, or at least giving a part of solution to global warming, so reducing CO2 emissions, and also combating uh, energy poverty, like by putting solar power panels on households rather than investing in huge centralized projects uh, that are serving the few and not the many. I could go more into detail, uh, but I think that in the ecological transition also offers us an opportunity to redistribute parts of the income, as an example, from energy production to the many rather than to the few. Um, so this is, this is clearly uh, what our support is aimed for. Why is EU cooperating with Vucic? Look, Serbia is an independent state. And uh, I feel welcomed, at least by part of the society here, to support civil society initiatives, to support green transition. 
but it's not the role, neither the role, nor the responsibility of the European Union to decide for the Serbian peoples who runs their country, who forms a coalition, who wins election. It's only due to Serbian population to decide that and not to the European Union. And yes, we are supporting Serbia as we're supporting the whole region, as you're all accession countries, some with more ambition, others with less ambition, like Serbia, unfortunately. And still, I stand for giving that support, uh, even though we know that parts of the EU money is not reaching the population, is not reaching the goals that it's aimed for. We are aware of that. But what would be the second option? Stopping? the transfer of financial contributions and support? Well, even if 40 or 50 or only 60% reach population, we would punish population. And this is not something I think European Union should do. Uh, yes, I mean, we have, to, we have to have a close look in detail, but overall, I think uh, it's our duty and it's our will to support Serbian population, even if parts of the money is ending up in private pockets. Pošto često dolazi ovo pitanje, pa oko to kupljenja i slično, samo da ponovim da što se medaljima objavlja tiče, mi već sarađujemo sa velikim brojem aktera koji su lokalnog tipa, kao što je potet solidarnost ili izbor za naša opšta kupatenica, dok na nacionalnom nivou naravno sarađujemo sa Nebojšom Zelenovićem i i ovoj novom grupacijom akcija. Da, otvorjeni smo i za druge i u narednom periodu ćemo kroz platformu za dobar grad to i obznaniti u ovom periodu. To je nekako, da kažemo, grupisanje na ovoj levo zelenoj strani. Prioritet su pregovori da se dođe do boljih izbornih uslova, onda izlazak na njih u vrednostno ideološki koherentnim i bliskim kolonom. Sve nešto je zadovoljeno tu temu. Ako smo imaš nešto ja da dodam na tu temu iz perspektive fondacije Heinrich Bell, dakle, da li, na pitanje da li zeleni pokreti mogu da prerastu u zelenu političku opciju, dakle, zeleni u Savzoru Republici Nemačku jesu to promoradili pre 40 i više godina, ali ne svi zeleni pokreti mogu i izrastaju u zelenu političku opciju. Dakle, ako pričamo o fundamentima zelene političke opcije, onda treba da imamo na umu da je to antinacionalistička, opcija, da je to feministička, da je to rodno osjetljiva opcija, mirovnjačka, antinuklearna i tako dalje. Tako da, ako vidimo šta su kor vrednosti zelene, dakle onda kažemo, a imamo mnoštvo ekoloških pokreta sada trenutno u Srbiji, dakle onda možemo lako to da filtriramo i da kažemo da neki mogu biti zelena opcija, ono što je blisko evropskoj zelenoj porodici, a neki će biti samo ekološki pokreti koji će onda boriti se za svoje lokalne stvari, ali, nažalost, neće moći da budu nosioci onoga što je u evropskoj tradiciji zelenih, koja je vrlo mlada u odnosu na ostale političke tradicije, dakle, prepoznato kao kor vrednost, a recimo u našem susedstvu, najmoj po srednjem, u Republici Hrvatskoj, dakle, vidimo sada da platformu možemo, dakle, jeste u stvari nešto što je iz različitih kažemo, ne policijne pokreta iz razvoja, da je prilisalo se u jednu ozbiljnu političku opciju. Izvijam se, ima, ima, ima. Gospodine Veselinoviću, i u uvodnom delu vi ste insistirali, evo sad je gospođa Petrić, rekla, znači, to je saradnje isključivo levi stranaka te opcije. Imamo li, ima li prostora u Srbiji za takvu vrstu saradnje, s obzirom da za razliku od Evrope, mi ne živimo u demokratskom sistemu i svaki glas je ovde važan. Za gospodina Vajca, ja se iskreno nadam da su vas, pomenuli ste mnoga mesta na Dunavu gde su vas odveli gospodine i gde ste videli sve ono što ste i pomenuli, nadam se da su vas odveli na nasip gde su pored Reni Bunara počeli da zideju kuće i zgrade i to ne rade neuki ljudi. To radi bivši predsjednik ove države i takođe pripadnici vlasti ovde. Hoćete li izvestiti nekoga u Evropskom parlamentu, ajde da ne preteram, ali dozvolite mi da se našalim, hoćete li izvesti u Evropskom parlamentu o ovim našim talibanima i šta oni nama rade? Hvala. Ok, 
Okay, da, hvala na pitanju. Često dobijemo to pitanje da ne vjerujem da možemo, da uspemo, ne bi se bavi ovim. Mislim da naš put je dug, on će trajati, ništa se neće desiti preko noći, ali broj građana i građanki koji nam se priključuju, broj aktivnosti koje imamo, a nestajemo već koliko godina unazad, nam govore da smo na ispravnom putu. Neće se promjena dosjeti preko noći, ali će se desiti kada se organizujemo, svi učinimo sve ono što je u našoj moći i izborimo se da oslobodimo institucije i ovu zemlju. Neće nam tu pomoći ni Tomas, ni Evropska unija, ni Nemci, ni Amerika, to moramo sami uraditi. I mislim da je to jedna od glavnih poruka koju danas s ove konferencije možemo ponesemo. Da moramo da se izborimo, da oslobodimo institucije naše zemlje, jer je ovo naša zemlja, zagrad budućnosti koju svi žajedno želimo da živimo, a ona mora biti socijalno pravednija i ekološki održivija, jer su to imperativni koji nam donosi 21. vek. I mislim da je to nešto na čemu mi stojimo i da od toga ne odustajemo. Mislim da možemo da uspemo i biogarski izbori su jedan od prvih koraka ka tome, kada se izborimo da oni budu makar malo pošteni. I mala nadopuna, samo prema što Tomas preuzme reč, a na tragu pitanja koje ste vi postavili, dakle, svi ovi pokreti jesu nekako, da kažemo, iz lagjera levog, i da li je u stvari moguće da oni iznesu neku promenu, jedan, da kažemo, deo odgovora na vaše pitanje jeste u stvari upravo forum koji se dešava u Sremskim Karolicima, koji se, dakle, zove Zemaljski forum, fondacija delimično podržava njegovo dešavanje, dakle, to je niz radionica predavanja u Sremskim Karolicima, sa lokalnim inicijativama, sa regionalnim inicijativama, gde se priča o ovim svim temama koje su, da kažemo, jako važne, zapostavljene kod nas, znači, postoje inicijative, postoje grupe koje ono za godinama vredno rade, postoje prostori da oni artikulišu i pruse svoje političke ideje, s jedne strane, a s druge strane postoje politički akteri, poput inicijative ne dajemo u Beograd, dakle, koji su spremni da ovo što oni rade prevode u političku arenu i trče trku za vrednosti, dakle, koje se tokom ovog foruma, na primjer, tamo kuvaju i stvari formulišu. Tako da, ja bih rekla, ima potencijala, ima prostora, oni su mali, ali rastu. Ja, sam imam vidjeti i vidjeti i vidjeti i vidjeti na endangering the water supply uh, of Belgrade. And I, I, I want to do a very clear statement here. I mean, there may be different opinions here in the room uh, towards what kind of economical system uh, a person prefers, whether it's a more liberal version of, of, of capitalism or a more social market oriented one, uh, which I would say I'm, I'm in favor of. But no matter what stance we have there, there are some goods which are common goods, like basic water supply, yeah, like public transport, like healthcare, like education. So this is the basic common goods which cannot be capitalized because they're there to basically serve the basic needs of citizens and not the income interest of whoever. And uh, I, I find it a quite interesting development also within the European political scene. One of the learnings of COVID crisis was very much that the countries that have a functioning, publicly well-financed healthcare system have a much lower death rate on COVID than countries which have privatized uh, um, uh, on a large scale healthcare. And, and uh, even liberal, and I would say neoliberal colleagues of mine in the European Parliament in the COVID crisis have admitted that it was a fault to privatize uh, the basic health care uh, for citizens and this is firing back now and they have clearly stated that they will not demand that anymore uh, on the European level and I think we should draw some learnings uh, from the last crisis and this is one of those uh, and uh, 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 this is uh, also counting and very clearly counting to the right on clean drinking water for citizens which you should not sacrifice for any uh, uh, profits, uh, uh, whoever may, may be willing to make. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Brzinski. Uh, ja se zvijem, nije, nije baš u vezi s temom, ali, ali za Dobricu. Um, pošto je, uh, znam sad kak, kakva je situacija sa koronavirusom, vakcinacija je ozbiljna tema. Um, kako se vi izjašnjate? Zašto vidite situaciju u kojoj uh, 
političke partije nisu aktivnije uključene u promociju vakcinacije, da li ste vi spremni da uključite se u to s obzirom da vaš pokret vuče dosta mladih glasača i kakav je baš stav vezano za vakcinaciju, da li političke stranke treba jasno da iznesu se? Hvala na pitanju. Što se tiče vakcinacije, mi smo jasno se odredili da su vakcine jedan od najvećih dometa čovečanstva i da oko toga nema debate da li ih treba primiti ili ne. Ono što mislimo da je problem je u stvari dolazi od vlasti, a to je da su od početka korona krize te nejasni inputi koji su dolazili, da je to najsmešni virus, pa različite konferencije za štampu koje su podgrevale, a da kažemo paranoju koja je onda uslovila da veliki broj građana ne veruje u institucije i u vakcine kao takve. A i podsjetit ću da je predsjednik Srbije jedno dugo, mislim, ni sada ne nosi masku. Ono, početka korona krize nije nosio masku, a time samim svojim primjerom nije pokazivao da to treba i da je on, kako bi rekao, podgrevao tu nejasnoću. Što se nas tiče, vakcine treba da budu javno, dostupne širokim masama, one treba da budu besplatne i ljudi trebaju masovno se vakcinišu. Mislim da ova situacija govori da svi zajedno moramo da se izborimo protiv nje. I nastavio bi se novo da je to jako velika uloga sistema zdravstva koji mora da bude javan, koji mora da bude podrška građanima, a ne onima koji imaju novca da plati. Spremi ste na svakom skupu da pozovete vaše glasače? Mi smo to radili sve vreme. Mi smo od početka korona krize prvo imali taj jedan talas pomaganja građanima koji su bili u loši situaciji kroz distribuciju medicinske pomoći. Mi smo organizovali te karavane kada je korona žarište bilo u Novom pazaru, ako se sećate. To, kako bi rekao, niko drugi nije radio. Mi nemamo problem s tim da to jasno kažemo. Mi sve vreme smo, nismo ni organizovali događaje zbog korone, nismo ni pozivali ljude na skupove kao, jel da, ovi ljudi koji su organizovali izbore i pravili masovne skupove, mi smo vrlo, kako bi se zove, strikni s tim i mislim da je u tome ljudski život i zaštita zdravlja sve tim. Just one question to you. How can it be that a simple test in Brussels costs 70 cents and in Belgrade 5 euros? How can it be that a PCR test in Brussels costs 40 to 60 euros and here it costs 90? How can that be? I would really like to have an answer on that. Because testing is the second important part of combating COVID. And I mean, in many Central European countries, testing is for free and we are inviting people to come and you can come anytime and you don't need to queue up for a long time and you can get tested and tested and tested. So I think this is a question you should ask your government. How can that situation be? Okay.